This is the Free Heal Life Podcast, episode number 136. I'm your host, Josh Madsen, coming at you from the Free Heal Life shop in Salt Lake City, Utah. And uh, for all you American free healers out there, happy 4th of July. And uh, hopefully you're having a good weekend. Uh, most people here are probably taking an extra long weekend to do some fun stuff. And uh, that's always a good thing. So... Not a lot of newsroom and notes today. Hopefully you enjoyed last week's podcast about the universal telemark norm, UTN. Uh, That was sort of a follow-up to even the previous week and just talking about sort of getting back to a single norm in telemark. So hopefully you check those out. Got some great feedback and some emails from folks about... uh, basically just uh what their thoughts were and uh it's been really fun to kind of interact with everybody you can always email me your thoughts and all that good stuff at podcast at freehealife.com and i always always appreciate it so today i am joined by a gentleman that i've known for a really long time and he's originally from cleveland ohio where he learned to ski and move around on some cross-country skis on the golf course like many folks in similar areas like that. And in the 1990s, he moved to Sun Valley, Idaho and got involved with telemark skiing and doing more telemark skiing than he had done before back in Ohio and ended up taking over the Sun Valley Tele Series and running that for about a decade and He's a really great guy. I always like seeing his photos and videos. We've known each other for a bunch of years uh, through various projects and ski stuff. And I'm glad to know him. He's a good dude. And I can't wait for you guys to check out this conversation. So please welcome to the podcast, Danny Walton. All right, Danny. How's it going, man? Welcome to the podcast. Great, Josh. Good to be on. Stoked to finally get you, man. I feel like uh, we, we've we've sort of gone back and forth on social a little bit over uh, since I started this, and I'm always like, I need to get you on here. And uh, <clears throat> I think I pre I, I I got the newer Sun Valley guys on, which was a good catalyst because you're uh, you're sort of the missing piece in in between a lot of that. So <laughs> yeah. Good, good guys. That was a great episode. Oh, I'm glad you got to check it out, man. That's awesome. Um, and uh, so you're, I, I, I kind of want to start um, just kind of basics, you know, like where you're from. Like, I, you know, we've known each other for a lot of years, but I don't even know if I know the whole history. And that's always where I always like to know, like, where, where did people come from? Where did you grow up? Where did skiing come into the mix? All that kind of stuff. So, where, I guess start us off. Like, where where did you grow up? So, uh, I was born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio, and um, right where I lived, there was a golf course that was real hilly. And my mom taught all five of us kids how to ski. And then that's something I could do after school. I could go cross country, and then I'd go go to the little small little rope toe hills on the weekends and learn how to alpine ski but i remember seeing a couple telemark skiers and so i started working teaching myself how to make the turns on the golf course making you know six turns at a time and then i'd lap it and go around all the different tour around and just hit all the different hills and just see how i could work in telemark turns Wow! and <clears throat> you know that little love of the of doing that every day and let the dog run and just kind of being out in nature just kind of set me up. And from there, you know, I had good friends that had a place up in New York. So we pretty much kind of cut my teeth in Western New York at holiday Valley. And I was Alpine skiing and that's kind of started more the transition. I got some real telemark gear because I taught myself how on on the old classics, like no wax, um, kind of skis. What is it? Track. Oh yeah. Skis with three pins so that's how i taught myself how to tell you and then i got some some little little carhu and some solo leather boots and then i went 
remember taking him to the lift over at Holiday Valley for the first time. And um, years later, I was ready to take the move to Sun Valley, where my friends that I grew up skiing with in New York, they moved there. So I followed them and moved out with a pair of cross-country skis and the Telemark skis and got a job teaching Alpine and did that for a few years and then kind of just transferred back to just full telemark and uh no looking back wow that's awesome 25 years 25 years from one year to be a ski bum turned into 25 at sun valley i love that i love how many people (laughs) i've had on the podcast that are from the midwest and then you come you know you come out to the rockies and yeah like you said it's like I was coming out for a year and it's like 25 years later, I'm still here. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a awesome. couple thousand days on, on bald mountain, man, I'm pretty, pretty lucky. Pretty, pretty sweet hill. That's amazing. Yeah. I didn't, re- <laughs> I, I guess I didn't, I, I wasn't, I'm not sure if I knew you started at holiday Valley, which is, I, that's actually a good stronghold for telemark, Hollymont, holiday Valley in Western New York. But, uh, Um, do you remember seeing a lot of telemarkers when you, like when you started going there? Yeah. You know, you'd see kind of like the handful of like kind of hippie guys, you know, and that was kind of caught my eye. And, you know, I was back in the, back in the day of doing like daffies and just skiing bumps and watching the Greg stump movies. So that's the time frame. And then, uh, yeah, taking, riding the Tannenbaum lift for the first time with the telly gear and pretty, pretty cool little woodsy kind of area. Yeah. That's so. a little bit of a haul from Cleveland too, I guess. Cause you, Cleveland, uh, hopefully I'm getting my geography, right? You're right next to Erie, right? PA. Yep. Got it. Cold. Yeah. Erie's the halfway point. So it's about, I guess it was like two and a half hours for us. Okay. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Well, let, so what, what year did you end up in, in sun Valley then? 97. Got it. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, I mean, was it kind of, I'm trying to remember, like, that's the year I graduated high school, you know, and I don't, I, I don't remember hearing a lot about Sun Valley. I mean, what was, what was that area like in, in the late nineties? Was it pretty hopping or was it kind of a sleepier town? You know, it, I think it's a little sleepier now, but, um, yeah, no, it had, it had, it was, it was a pretty vibrant in the nineties. And they had the Telemark series was, um, was, was in full force, you know, Sun Valley had uh, a continuous, I I guess their claim to fame was the longest continuous run series because there are events every month. And so I, I got kind of roped in like, Hey, why don't you check this out? And, um, Back then, you could sponsor somebody and bring them in. <laughs> you had to be like tapped by by the no, old no, guard not, or something. Not quite, but like, let's say, all right, I'm going to sponsor Josh, and so then, like, I got your, you know, your mission, and then mine was like for free or something. Or oh, something, something I get like you. That, I get you. Just to bring new people in. That that makes a lot more sense. I thought you were saying like you had to like prospect or something like a motor no, like no, a motorcycle no. gang. <laughs> no, it was like how can we get more people out here? And all right, we'll just sponsor them, bring them out. You know. So you showed up with Telly Gear in when you moved there, and then you find out that there's this long running Telemark series already going on. Yeah. So I was alpining a lot, and then bring bring in you know working them into the mix and. Um, yeah, two o three like K two, KVC or something, <laughs> just big old long stiff skis. So, with thirty two hundred feet of vert. Jeez, <laughs> That's, isn't it that funny to think back? Like, just oh my gosh, what, like what the skis were, and but it, it's I it always kind of blows my mind. I'm like, how did we not figure out the short? softer ski thing earlier or like early tip rise or you know like i'm like what, totally. what were we doing because it was almost like a badge of honor you brought uh, the greg stump movies up i mean i think most of us that grew up in that era you know we're watching glenn plake and i remember him talking about i don't know what movies it was but you know plake's always talking about like his his mogul skis were like nothing under 
you know, 205 or something or whatever. Right. So it almost seemed like a badge of honor. You're like, no, nah, I ski mogul. Like these are my mogul skis. They're 200s, you know, <laughs> which makes no sense, but no, that's good. That's good stuff though. I, I'm curious. So when I did that other podcast with uh, Julian and the boys that are doing Sun Valley telly now, and I want to get into a little bit more of that, but like with you bringing up that series, do you remember kind of who was leading the charge with all that back then? I mean, I know that's a long time ago. That's a big ask, but I'm just curious. I always like to kind of hear some names, of, you know? You know, I'm, I I remember meeting, because I, I did it, I think, for 10 or 12 years, and all the a lot of random old people would come out of the woodwork and introduce themselves and be like, hey, I did this from, like, 84 to 88, or, you know? And... Um, I'm forgetting some of their names, but, um, you know, it was really big uh, with Mike Cranick when he ran it. And then um, it kind of got passed on a couple times after him. And then it kind of fell into the hands of um, one of the shops that sold the gear. And I remembered some of those early events that I did that were really fun parties and, you know, just really ski ski bum throwdowns um so i volunteered to kind of kind of take over the reins and then you know that's when telly was really pumping as well and we we did our best to bring out a ton of people and make it like a super affordable day like the great the great ski bum day where you can pay 20 bucks race you know if you want to get your party on we got amazing drink sponsors. Get your drink on. You'd win tons of stuff because the industry was really generous at the time. And basically, it was like a hardy group that would use the gear to the max. So it was like the prime prime for businesses to kick down. Yeah. And so, yeah. So what year did you kind of start taking over the reins of making sure the events were happening? Was that early two mid two thousands, early two thousands? I like to say two, 2003 or 2002. Yeah. Okay. 2002 to maybe 2012, maybe. Yeah. Cause I, Isn't that, that was, crazy. I can't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say it was a good drink sponsor a couple of years there or something. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. But I mean, that's kind of when you and I, I think cross paths the first time was probably like Oh five ish. Oh six. Cause we were both skiing for Rosignol back in the day. And I remember, I think, cause you were, you were with Rosie at that point, weren't you? Like Oh six ish. Yeah. 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 And I remember, yeah, it was kind of, it's funny to think. Cause even at that time, those were like, I still felt like I would meet people. It wasn't like the inner, I wasn't like looking up events on the internet to go to or anything like that. It was like, I'd meet you and you're like, yeah, I got this sun Valley Hawaiian nationals thing. And I'm like, Oh wow. There's like a scene up there. I had no idea. So, um, but that's what you were saying. I mean, like it was, it, it was different back then. Like the company support, you know, like people were throwing down to like throw a telemark events back then. Right. The Hawaiian nationals was the biggest event. The race department would do that every year. <laughs> so we, we would get close to like 200 people. Wow. And then have bands on flatbeds and have like four or five kegs and, you know, have a big barbecue and feed everybody and then just have this sick raffle and right at the base of the, right at the base of the hill. So it's just really, the weather is usually nice. So pretty, pretty killer. That's so awesome. That's so cool. (laughs) Yeah. And so you said like 10 years you ran it? Yeah. Wow. That's a lot of work, bro. And I remember it because at one point, didn't you start like doing a reggae festival too or something? Yeah. So I, I used to do these events. Um, it was called um, Marley in the Mountains and then it changed to Reggae in the Mountains. And so it was the greatest show on snow because it would be in the winter celebrating um, Bob Marley's birthday. Oh. Okay. And the original roots, how that came about was a ski race i used to do as part of the telemark series called bob marley day and it was right around bob's birthday the first weekend in february we used to have it at soldier mountain 
and um, it was an all-terrain top-to-bottom race. And they would oh, pump out like 10,000 watts of reggae. And I'd have like, I'd bring in like reggae DJs. So they'd be spinning at Soldier and you would be like riding any chair and you would just like hear like bumping roots reggae. Really? All day? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. <laughs> that, was, that was when Bruce Willis owned it. Yep. And they were just like, like, we got a big style. We got a big sound system. Let's pump some music. <laughs> that's it's so, like anything we wanted they were like sure go for it <laughs> i brought that's funny you brought bruce willis because i think i asked the guys that on that last podcast and i mean did you ever meet him at soldier like was he ever skiing there you know i never met him i ended up cat skiing uh guiding there for a number of years um after that and um but i never met him so I just always, I, I love like random little tidbits like that. It's so funny. It's like in this little hill. I mean, because soldiers, like how many, is, is it only one lift or a couple no, lifts? No, there's, there's two lifts. Two lifts. Maybe maybe a couple thousand vert. I think that makes the best telly festivals uh, like that though. Because like, it's, cause like you said, you literally can like have everybody there at once. I mean, you take over the sound system. I just always feel like those are more interesting. Like you're able to do a lot more because there's not as much red tape, pro you know, in most times. So. Yeah. And just think of like kind of the old school, like a frame kind of ski lodge with the bar upstairs and with the, you know, the old kind of picture, like the old school kind of like, what's his name? Shapiro, the photographers. Oh, the guy. Uh, yeah. Mark Shapiro. <laughs> Yeah, like one of his photos. It was like a classic look like that. <laughs> I know. I wonder. I wonder. I don't know. The maybe that. I, I I just wonder how long all of those types of places will be around because there is kind of this like iconic stuff like that. You know, you, those mom and pop resorts that you can still find that have that vibe. I just think are so cool. You know, it's like yeah, like you said, the A frames the funky little bar you know everything is like wood there's probably some animal heads on the on the wall you know like <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> oh that's rad man <clears throat> i didn't even realize they had cat skiing too because you, were you uh was it just like a, was it a backcountry sort of cat thing or sort of just side country no so it was it was behind the resort you can also like tour you can get off the second chair and just go back and tour into this zone but um yeah, I think we had 2,500 foot shots, just really pristine Idaho backcountry. It was a great gig. But then the, the cat would break and this, you know, there was a lot of kind of little issues like that. So, but uh, it was great when it was on, man. Greatest job ever. <laughs> yeah, that's not, that doesn't sound like too bad a gig. <laughs> that's yeah. A, that's awesome. Yeah, and a lot really of Really mom and pops. Oh yeah. It was just probably like kind of like somebody came up with it and it was like a little side side hustle for the mountain, I'm guessing. Not like a huge operation or It wasn't a huge operation, but the guy um I worked under was over in Lagrave for like 15 years and he he came kind of back and so I I was working under this great 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 guy who taught me a tons and really good dude, Gary Ashurst. Huh. So yeah, pretty pr pretty neat. Now now they're kind of trying to maximize it more and some new people running it and owning it. And so that's kind of where that ended. <laughs> yeah. Well, and a lot of, you know, I think you were one of the first people that sort of, um, although I have not skied up there, um, you were one of the first people I remember sort of hearing about the Sawtooth Mountains, you know, which is really your zone, right? Like, I mean, the backcountry there. You're, you can access a lot of that stuff. And you were one of the first guys, I think, that kind of told me about that. I mean, you, yeah. you still spend a bunch of time up there, don't you? You know, a little bit less the last few years now that I have the family. But, um, yeah. yeah, it's there's a lifetime of skiing up there. It's tons on the tick list still. Just um, went paddleboarding down the river and just got to just have some prime views of like, wow, I haven't even been into a lot of these zones. <laughs> so I was doing some good scoping last weekend. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of gotten a little bit more on the radar, but it was 
pretty special place. Yeah, I thought about that when I asked you. I'm like, <laughs> I'm totally going to be the podcast where people are like, dude, quit blowing our spots up. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard because, I mean, some of these places like like where people didn't used to go, you're starting to see more, you know, more traffic. You know, there's people poking around more spots, and I'm sure you guys are seeing that up your way too. Yeah, you know, it's 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 a lot different rolling up to just seeing cars parked where you never would ever see cars parked. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> when you mentioned the paddle boarding, that's another funny thing. Like I thought I thought about that before we hopped on. I actually saw your Instagram the other day and I was like, Oh, he's still out there paddle boarding. I remember you being like one of the first dudes that was like doing that on the rivers. I swear, dude. I, I remember being like, what is, what do you, like, what is, cause I knew you from telemark skiing and then you're like, oh dude, the paddle boarding and I'm going down the rivers and I was like, what? I'm like, I didn't even know what it was, you know? And you were out like cruising around in the back country rivers and stuff. So. Oh dude, I'm, I'm totally addicted. It's the closest thing to telemark skiing. I tell everybody, you never know what's going to happen. Cause you're just like all, all over the place. It does wonders for your balance. It gives you opportunity to spend time in nature and get into places like, um, you know, I took a couple big mountain skiers out the other day and we were, we were going down They're like, I've went down this road a thousand times and I've never seen any of these views. And it's like, exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And I have, um, a guy you need to get on the podcast, Buck Cobb. Oh, I would love to get Buck. I know who Buck Cobb is. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he's, I, I, I've always referred to him as my coach because he told me I used to make nice turns, but I needed to get strong. And, (laughs) and he's just a great brethren. Love him, man. He's my main man. And he was, he was the first person I know to get a paddleboard. So I call him like, uh, he's the instigator. And then I've, done a bunch of rivers with him and we have lots of fun and so good dude did you guys meet through telemark stuff well he lived in sun valley but yeah i was telemarking he was telemarking and um that's kind of how we connected oh a lot of the same same friends because he moved here before me and kind of ran with some different crowd but then a lot of our crowds have all like intermixed and but you said he's up at Stevens now, right? Up in Washington. Yep. Okay, yeah. that makes better sense because I remember. I think I think he was at Hawaiian Nationals this year. I think because I yeah, saw he won. <laughs> okay, yeah, right. Like I <laughs> saw I, I saw a picture of him, and like I don't even think I I don't I don't think I've met him in person, but like that name has popped up over the years, and I saw that I was like, oh, that's that Butt Cobb dude. But I I was like trying to figure. I'm like I don't think he's a Sun Valley guy, but that makes a lot more sense. Like he has some some old roots there and um yeah he may have lived here like 15 years or something then he lived in tahoe but he grew up skiing at stevens and his family's back there so oh that's cool brought him back to washington yeah that's another great mountain with a lot of a lot of telemark history yep oh that's rad man well so uh i was yeah kind of going back to the event stuff i was kind of curious like um like with the with the series and stuff, I mean, are you now? I mean, you you handed it off. I think it, the guys I had on, Julian, I'm trying to remember, yep. uh, Julian and and the rest of the guys. I'm totally blanking on names. I'm sorry, yep. guys. They're Brendan gonna, and Kyle. Yes, and they've got lots yes. of great. So bad. Guys. I need to have like notes Still in front in. of me. Yeah. Did, so you, when you handed it off, it went directly to them, though. That was like, there's no in between person I'm missing here. Right. Nice. And have you, have you been able to go to the events like, you know, intermittently over the years? Yeah. You know, I try to, I don't make them all with, with the family, but I made, I made a couple last year. I met, I met, made the Roto run and the Hawaiians. So yeah, I, I, I try to, and, and I still kind of try to spread the word amongst my old crew to try to show up and support those guys. That's awesome. That's, Brendan, Brendan was in my neighborhood now too, which is pretty cool. And are you, are you writing, uh, writing catch him? So after 20 years, I moved 15 miles south. I was in catch him for 20 years. Now we live in Bellevue. Oh, cool. And it's a cool little, cool little spot. Um, 
it's not doesn't have like the resort feel which is kind of cool it's kind of like a small idaho town but um you know i'm 15 minutes 15 miles from the hill yeah that's lots of cool backcountry out all the canyons yeah that's that's nothing 15 minutes yeah (laughs) at first i was because i used to you know my old spot where you'd stay at on the film tour you could walk to the chair so i was pretty spoiled for a lot of you know a decade yeah (laughs) so i was like oh my god it's so far i was like you know what i'm still closer than like 95 percent of the world to skiing i know yeah i know it's (laughs) funny when you said like two and a half hours from cleveland to go skiing i was like honestly that's like normal for a lot of folks you know with traffic yeah <laughs> with, yeah with traffic yeah exactly and and then you get there and it's like raining or something <laughs> so yeah oh that's crazy well that's uh <clears throat> it's so cool that yeah you put so much time and kind of kept that thing going and um you know and and one of the things i like i still follow if anybody follows you on instagram i mean you're still out there getting it man i mean um I mean, you're still shooting photos here and there with people, I think, right? Like, uh, yeah, I, I get out just a couple of times a year, not like I used to, but, um, dude, I just love the turn. It's, it's, I love, I love skiing. Well, and you do a good job. That's what I've always loved. You're one of, you're one of those guys that's good at showing it too. You know, like, um, you've worked with some really cool photographers. I'm trying to think, uh, I think, wasn't Gabe Gabe Rogel and you yep. early on? Yeah, we we used to do a lot of stuff. I I started I met him through K two, and then I used to have passes at Targi, and he used to live over that way. So I used to shoot with him a bunch, and some amazing guys around here. Um, uh, Ray Gad and Carl Weatherly and Kyle Roberts and John Mancuso. So I've been really lucky. Just get out with my buddies and cap capture it you know i like i like the the idea of making photos and just the backdrop and just kind of not to not to say look at me but like this is you know this is share the stoke and the passion and just like make it make it one wish they were there yeah it's it you know it's like oh look at that fuck i want to be there (laughs) <laughs> no totally well and that's that's what's interesting is like it really is i think you said it in a good way where it's like you're not it's not like this vanity thing where you're like trying to you know take a picture just because you want to be cool but i think there is a certain element of it, it there's a certain art kind of like telly like you're learning how to do this thing i think getting out with a good friend that, that shoots photos is also kind of fun in a way too because you're sort of documenting the movement and and, uh, and that's why I think, I, I mean, I always think every time I see photos of you, I'm always like, you know, it, it's a really good way of like depicting the turn, like you're saying, you know, like stokes me out. I'm like, Oh, there's Danny, you know, getting after it. And, uh, yeah, it's a, you know, I, I don't know. Like, do you, have you always liked that? Cause I mean, you were, you used to shoot a lot of photos back in the day, you know, I mean, was it just yeah. something you enjoyed like skiing? Yeah, I love looking at the mountain and just kind of, you know, figuring out the way, you know, the safety, how we're going to tour it. But like, oh, yeah, this could be like a really cool shot because that, you know, I've never seen something like that for the backdrop or something like that. And, um, you know, getting getting the opportunity to work with some amazing companies. And that was kind of part of the deal as well. So kind of not just taking the gear, but kind of being proactive about it. And then that kind of turned into, you know, being lucky enough to appear in lots of different magazines, which and ad campaigns. So who would have thought, you know, self-taught skier from Cleveland would be like getting in these. So <laughs> that kind of fueled my stoke as well. For sure. I mean, yeah. that, that, I mean, nothing wrong with being stoked about that. I mean, that is a, that is a cool story. <laughs> Um, I, you know, I realized I, you, you brought the K2 thing up, but when did, cause I, like I, I mentioned before, you and I kind of met via the Rosignol stuff early two thousands. Was it after that, that you kind of started hooking up with K2 on some stuff? Yeah. So, um, I was with Rosie Remember, We, it was, you know, who was it? It was yourself, me, Dylan Crossman and Evan. 
got the back covers of of backcountry. Oh, dude, I totally remember that. Yep. And that was pretty cool. Instead of just using the one, they 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 showcase all of us, which yep. was really rad. Um, but then I I had an empty powder day skiing the bulls at Sun Valley, and I ran into my cat trip, and just had this phenomenal telly day, empty chairs, just epic nuking day, and he just threw it out there. He's like, hey, have you ever? Ever wanted to come over to K2? Love to have you. And he lived in my neighborhood at the time. And, you know, that was my hero growing up. And so all of a sudden I was like, holy shit, you know. Rosy was was great to us. And, but um, it was a good opportunity to go to K2 and then got to meet with Gabe and do photo shoots and got to ski in the sawtooth with Andrew McLean and Luke Miller and, some other great folks. So, um, yeah, it just kind of opened up a couple more doors and just having Mike in town really help that, you know, kind of help for nudge me along for being, you know, a telemark guy, but yet given, given me pretty cool opportunities. Yeah. And that was, so was that still kind of that same era, I guess, kind of like towards the end of you doing the, the, um, telemark series there and stuff like kind of, Let's see. I don't even know. What'd you say? You went to like 2010 or 2012 or something with that. So you were doing K- yeah, K2 was, at the end of that. Let's see. I I think K2 came on around like 2006. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. So, I mean, it was so still 2006. K, so K2 Telemark was still a thing. Yeah. And then Mike was developing the backside line and then he put me in some of those ads, which was really amazing. And Gabe, Gabe's photos and um yeah i was i was just kind of yeah focusing on that and that's when i was cat skiing guiding and um during that time as well so yeah i love that man what it's cool talking to you about this because i think back and and that really was just like a really cool time for telemark you know like there was a lot of stuff going on you know there was there was a lot of momentum in a lot of areas that maybe we don't see as much now. Um, I mean, I think, I think we're in a really good place now, but kind of like in a different way. That was like kind of a, the K2 telemark, the Rosignol telemark, like all these brands sort of had stuff going on. And, uh, and man, for you to get to work with Hatrip, also one of my, my heroes, hopefully one of these days I'll track him down and get him on the podcast. Cause he's, uh, a missing link in the evolution of, of talking about this stuff. <laughs> oh yeah. No, his, and how he came into telly was pretty, pretty awesome too. So, um, yeah, I, he always, we, we got a day in last season and, and it was like really good spring corn skiing. And so that was, that was super fun to catch up. And, and so, you know, I was joking with him that it's never been a better time to be a telemark skier. Cause my gear right now is just so phenomenal and I'm so happy with it. And I got a sweet quiver. <laughs> it's just like, dude, you got to come back. <laughs> He's like, you make it look good, but I'm not coming back. <laughs> I, bet, I bet we could drag him back. That would, how, how cool would that be? If we could actually get, get him out on a pair of pins these days, that'd be pretty sweet. Well, you know who I did get the chance to do that to was was Blake when he was hosting his Real Thrills uh, RSN show. He came in. I got him to come to host his show at the Hawaiian Nationals. And uh, we had this great ski bum house and everybody tellied there. And he walked in and there's this like everybody had like three pairs of skis or some. So it's like all these ski telly skis. And he's like, oh, gosh, look at those skis, man. Like, I got to go telly. I was like, what size is your boot? You know, and so like I gave him boots and he took out like a pair of like race stock K2 skis that had telly bindings on them. He's like, oh, those are the ones I want. I'm like nice and stiff <laughs> and, uh, and took them up and rocked it and tanned them. And um, one of the cool thing he brought to the Hawaiian Nationals was the human slalom, the telly parade. He's the one who got that started? He that was one of his additions when I was running it. He that was something he was at. He was like, "Oh, we got to do a human slalom," and everybody was up on the hill together and they were filming it. 
Whoa. Um, and so, but then it was from top to bottom. So talk about making like 3,000 telemark turns. Like people's legs were just burnt. Oh, <laughs> so now they do it a little bit lower. But yeah, and then there was like a cat track and people were like throwing helis and spread eagles. And it was pretty classic. Wow, that's cool. So was was I'm curious, how, how was he, did he make telemark turns? Like you saw oh, him? Yeah, he's, he, he just crushed it. Of course. Like, yeah. Like I like I should even ask that question. <laughs> like, so yeah, that was that was that was pretty that was a pretty good time. That's one of the things I've always really respected about Plake. I mean, as a young guy, you know, again, Greg Stump movies, huge huge influence on me as a kid. Um, you know, and he was just so radical, you know, back then, you know, the Mohawk and just everything. But one of the things is it's been cool following him over the years is he he is a true skier skier you know like he's very in tune with the history and the different types of skiing and like he's very familiar with like old tricks and new tricks and like I've always thought that's so cool about him so that's that's fun I I don't know if I've ever heard anybody else tell me a story about him getting on telemark gear so that's kind of a cool little yeah tidbit. some some red tea races. Cause that was like when he was doing like scarpas, I was like, I got some shells, you got liners. Oh yeah. You know? And <laughs> wow. Yeah. And some old K2 mocks, and like old little race room skis. Wow. That's cool. Well, <laughs> well that's cool. Uh, that's in, in a little bit of a uh, sun Valley telly history, the, the slalom being a Glenn Plake suggestion. I like it. Yeah. And he did the tandem as well. Oh, that's what you meant? Like tandem skis? No, no, no. No, he did. Um, he jumped on a pair of tandems because there was a tandem division of the part of the Hawaiians. Are you talking about like one pair of skis for two people? Yeah. Who? Uh, the... I forget who went with him. It might have been Buck. I'm not, I, I, I forget. We're going to need to get old Buck Cobb on here and verify some, uh, verify, <laughs> some <laughs> verify some factual information here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but if buck listens to this podcast he's probably like how the hell did i get on these guys talking about me all the time <laughs> <laughs> he's a legend oh that's <laughs> funny that's great um <laughs> well i uh i mean you've been through a lot in terms of uh gear i mean god just talking to you man i'm like it, it, talking about what gear was around when you're kind of getting into sun Valley and into that early 2000 period to now. I mean, um, like, I guess I, I'm curious, what, what are you running? Like, what's your kit look like these days? Like bindings, boots, skis, like anything, like what, what kind of stuff are you running on, on the, on the most frequent day? So I'm, I'm, I'm really blessed to still work, work with some companies as ambassador. So, um, I'm, I'm with the, the M equipment, which I've been totally blown away by. And it's been the most durable binding that's held up for me that I've ever had. So big, big shout out and lots of love to Pierre because um, they just, they just keep innovating and, and just making, keep on making these little tweaks that are making our sport just so better lighter i love the flex and the feel on it um <clears throat> i do run the crispy uh world cup you know because scarp is not making something any stiffer so switched over with the crispy because i like i like the stiffer boot it works for me because i do kind of run run bigger skis and then i'm also working with kesley um so those skis you know got got me covered <clears throat> from a sweet touring, lightweight touring, then add, add Mahejo and super light, but sweet. Um, but for the resort, I'm, I'm, uh, geez, I, I got a skinny ski at 96 underfoot, a Kessley, which, um, is great for like the Baldy groomers. And then I got a 106 and a 115 um for the power days so how, how often are you pulling out 115s these days i'm curious 
six inches or more. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yep. Because I feel like all of us went, you know, you were talking about that backside line in K2. I mean, think about it, like dark sides, like some of oh, those. That was my favorite ski. I wish I kept those. Those are so sweet. I know. I wish I had a pair too. I don't have a <laughs> pair. But that, like, I love the side stash and I love the, which I think side stash was more like 115, like you're talking about. Um, but uh, Yeah, 108 underfoot. That was a 108. 108. Okay. Yeah. See, I think, yeah, I think I've decreased uh, quite a bit. I like that 95. 105 um you know if it's it's deep you know i like going a little bit more but um yeah that's it okay so six it's like a six inch rule that's when the that's when the big guns come out huh yeah just you know i i love my 106s and they they do everything but i do like that just extra float and just making just huge turns just kind of point it for like 50 yards and then just just make just big sweeping <laughs> effortless turns yeah I, I, it, it seems like <laughs> no no i'm just imagining because it, it and that's uh, it's almost like the gear like that 115 sort of seems like that is the big gun and that's why i was saying the dark side i mean some of these skis were just so fat you know like you don't really see that quite as much i think we were all just like everybody just got excited. They got fatter and fatter and fatter. And then I think everybody was like, all right, hang on a second. Like let's, let's tune it down a little bit. And, and now you're seeing like kind of what you're talking about that range, you know, 95 up into the 115, but not really much higher than that. Yeah. The nine ninety six and 106 are, are pretty much what I use mostly. Yeah. No, that totally makes sense. So skiing major a lot. Um, What's your take on that? Because I mean, you're you're obviously skiing in bounds. Then I'm assuming and out of bounds. Um, yeah, it's 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 you know I was I was coaching the big mountain team at Sun Valley, and so I'm just getting pushed by these young, just ripping chargers, and so it just held up. Um, I love the flex. It kind of reminds me of like the olden days, just because. Um, it just kind of like a really smooth transition. And then when it, you know, it provides a lot of power as well. Um, yeah, I was kind of, I was really wondering. kind of focus on my technique because it's Sun Valley. That's kind of one of the things. So I try to make, make it look as effortless as possible. Well, and it's funny you brought up that the, it reminds you of sort of this previous time of bindings. Cause I think that's been a common theme with that binding that talking to folks is the flex is really nice, you know, and I think it, it lets people adjust in a lot of ways, customize that flex. Um, are you, are you running both the small inner spring and then the regular stock spring or are you running the red lines or how, how's your setup look on the binding? I'm just, I'm regular, just standard out of the box. Here I go. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've been reading, you know, it's interesting. I'm not like the super techie nerd. Um, I just kind of know what I like. Yeah. Um, but can't, I should know all these different specs. Cause it's funny, like reading, reading and listening to some of these little takes on it. Um, but it's obviously I've, I've broken so many pairs of bindings from all different brands. And so these, I, I, I can't, you know, spread enough love for. <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. <clears throat> I, I've been like that most of my life too. Like the whole different, like, yeah, if, if it works, cool. I mean, if you think about it, Tele bindings, when you and I kind of started, I mean, it kind of was like, all right, here's your binding. And that was, <laughs> that was sort of the end of the conversation. Like you mount it and you ski it. There wasn't really like adjusting and all these different things going on. You just kind of went with it so that makes sense oh do you remember remember you got your plates for under your targas so you wouldn't boot out oh yeah the little like a, <laughs> like a lifter plate dude yeah yeah i know that, that, that was a big deal which which directly correlates to how thin the narrow the skis were under your foot so now oh that's but funny. yeah with with the current setup you know you can lay some trench there's there's a lot of power to it but one thing um, skiing at Sun Valley has taught me is uh, efficiency because you have all these world-class alpine people that are your buddies that you have to chase around. 
So figuring out where to be efficient so you can keep up with the pack. Yeah. There, you guys <laughs> really have had a lot of great skiers out of there. I mean, let's see. Christ brothers are out of there, right? Uh, Darren Ralves, I think, is out of, the, out of that zone. Or not, Ralves? Is that right? No, he, he, he's from Tahoe, but he's real good friends with the Chris. Oh, um, I'm thinking uh, Will. What the, Will Burks. Will Burks, dude. Yeah. Those are some OG Will names. Burks. Those guys shred hard. <laughs> There's some oh, strong skiers around there. Oh, yeah. McKenna Peterson, Crazy Carl, Colin Collins, lots, lots, lots of folks you can always get to see. <laughs> Yeah. Is it, what is it like there on a powder day in Sun Valley? I mean, is it, is it like there's, uh, everyone just shreds and you just got to get up and get after it? Or is it like, I mean, like here, like, yeah. I, 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 it's get like it. that. It's, it's like, yeah, you, no, you got 40 minutes we to knock it out. <laughs> and we don't get a ton of the days. So people are always kind of frothing. So you appreciate what you get. You know, we don't, might not get as much snow as all these other places but day in day out it's a really sweet place to ski yeah so when it does you know people have their spots and you know you go full throttle and you know but you can also still find your spot stays after the storm you can still do that yeah like if you know where you're going there's still little pockets yep. and stuff <laughs> yep in little side country and great touring and like the old burn area and but also they opened a new, a new lift and it was kind of lower in the mountain. And I was kind of thinking, why did they put a lift there? And, oh, we're never going to get to ski that. Well, last year we got to ski it and it has just really nice long sustained pitches for like a five minute walk. Hmm. Yeah. So we got it for like a month and then, you know, didn't ski it much after that, but it was, it was on. I believe I'm a believer now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, that's, uh, that's good, man. Well, so, uh, I guess moving, I know it's, I know it's the, the dead of summer, but, uh, you got any fun plans for uh, next winter? You know, haven't gotten too far. Um, you know, I've, I've two daughters, four and six, so they're getting, they're getting really into it. So, um, you know, the Sun Valley Telly has an event at Roto Run, which is owned by the Ski Ed Foundation, a little mom and pop um, area. So we ski there a ton. It's just one Palma lift, goes up like 800 feet. You can back the truck up, put out lawn chairs, put their drinks and snacks and just cut them loose. And just total, I know everybody works there and they can just have total independence and just rip around. Oh, that's so cool. Pretty, pretty rad. And it's not like fancy lodges. It's like this, the old school ski bum kind of experience. So pretty cool to instill that in them. And that's, that's pretty close to you guys or is it right in town? It's in Haley. So it's 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 like 10 minutes from my house, you know, and they have after school programs. So my daughter gets picked up you know, twice a week taken there and gets to ski, you know, so they have a little park too. So steep skiing on top for the racer kids and, um, a pretty gem, man. Everybody in Cleveland and Western New York would be loving it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's such a cool thing. That's a good way to grow up too. You know, you get picked up from school and you get to do some skiing and uh, they'll, I'm sure they're, they're going to grow up oh. just right. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, and they just, and Dada, we go ski today. Sure. And they just keep asking. So I just keep saying yes. Yeah, you should. <laughs> you so. should. That's, that's, that's your ticket. That's your ticket to more skiing down the road, man. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. My wife's a great skier from, from Crystal Mountain. And so, yeah. So we all like to get out. Oh, I love that. That's that's another one on my tick list, Crystal. I haven't skied there, but I always hear great things about that area. Yeah, I did a trip where I, I skied with Buck and at Stevens and then went to Crystal because she grew up there, you know, in, at a cabin where her grandpa built. So she grew up, you know, not going to school on Fridays because they're at the ski cabin. And so, yeah, pretty, pretty neat. But it sounds like they're changing a lot as well um, at Crystal, 
getting busy a lot busier now and yeah it's i think it's a full overflow i've got big, some f- big expansion yeah i've got some friends from enum enum claw which is not too far i mean it's like right there by crystal and it's like yeah full overflow from seattle so it's a growing world out there so yeah well that's rad man well i'm it's so good to catch up with you and i love uh i love hearing all you're doing and thanks for keeping that uh I always like to thank all the event people because had you not kept that thing going, who knows where it would be up there in Sun Valley. So salute to you, sir, for oh, thanks, all your man. all your service over the years. <laughs> well, well, likewise, man. It was pretty cool to get down there and see your shop a couple of years ago and uh, yeah, keep it keeping keeping the turn alive, man. Protector of the turn. I love that term. Oh, I love that too. Yeah, you you are definitely That's- you're definitely of the br- <laughs> bitching's the right word. <laughs> oh, I love it, dude. All right, brother. Well, let's. Uh, I uh, I think I made a a a a hard promise that I'm coming to Sun Valley for Hawaiian Nationals this year because I failed every other year of my life. So you might just see me up there next uh, spring, and uh, we'll, we can do some turns. <laughs> dude, I don't think we've skied since the old skiing skiing magazine testing days oh yeah i know and that was like <laughs> literally like 20 years ago or something i mean that was a long time ago so, so but, i'll get it i'll get up there and and uh yeah i know and i always missed you when you used to let me stay at your place you'd be like oh, i'm out you know and i'm like but you always like left your door open i always had a place to stay when i was in sun valley so it was great yeah you know we i, I lived there I don't know, eight years and I never had a house key. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man, we'll, uh, keep up the good works and, uh, yeah, just looking forward to just continuing to spread telemark. No training heels ever. Just love it, man. It's, there's no, no better time to be a telemark skier than, than today. The gear is just so fun and, uh, yeah, pure stoke. You never know what's going to happen. Keeps you real present. I agree. (laughs) I love that, brother. All right, man. Well, enjoy the rest of the summer, and I will see you up in your hood next year. All right. Blessings. Thanks, bro. Always great to catch up with Danny. He's such a good dude and someone who's put a lot of time and effort into uh, Telemark in his zone, like so many others have. And... uh, Awesome to hear, you know, kind of his history with Sun Valley Telly. I always love those Midwest folks coming from places like Cleveland and making it out west to the Rockies. You know, I think uh, skiing and telemark skiing and snow is cool anywhere, but uh, it's fun to hear how people have kind of made their way out to places like Sun Valley, Idaho, built a life for themselves and uh, had so many cool experiences. So I always love uh, getting into those types of conversations. So big thanks to Danny and uh, also good reminder that I do believe I've given my word that I'm going to the Sun Valley Tele Festival next year. So, or at least the Hawaiian Nationals. So that's on the radar. Thanks for checking things out today. As always, sign up for our mailing list. That is the place to get the hot tips about what's going on in Telemark each week. And you can find us all over the intergalactic web. You can follow me. Uh, on Instagram, Facebook, at Josh No Madsen, and all of our various other stuff. Shop at freehealthlife.com, support telemarkskier.com, and you can email me direct at podcast at freehealthlife.com. I've got a great episode next week with Taylor Johnson, our general manager at Free Heal Life. And we're going to dig into some deep, deep questions from people sending in their questions to us and have uh, all that ready to go and uh, some awesome stuff that we'll be talking about. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, rest of your week, and I will see you next Monday. So until then, spread telemark always. See you later.